that taxi strike that, of course, uh, turned ugly earlier on today. Ayanda Ali Payne is a spokesperson on behalf of the Transport Ministry. She joins us now via Skype. Ayanda, good evening. A pleasure to have you on. Firstly, what was the minister hoping to achieve when he went out there to meet the taxi drivers today? Kathy, a very good evening to you and to the viewer. Thank you very much for this opportunity. Well, in fact, Minister Mbalula was going there to engage the media. We had a, a group of media professionals who had gathered in Soshangube after having covered some of the hotspots this morning, and Minister was there squarely to speak to them. So this was no rally. Uh, there was no invitation that was sent out uh, to uh, the taxi industry to engage the minister. But after seeing the stakeholders and being someone who is always willing to engage his stakeholders, uh, the taxi drivers then had some very pertinent questions to ask the minister. The minister took time to uh, address most of those concerns. But as you can imagine, the longer he stood there, the more uh, some of the drivers called their fellow drivers to say, we have an audience with the minister. This is possibly a once in a lifetime opportunity in that he's talking to us directly and not to the uh, authorities or the leaders. And so come through and we saw then an increase in the size of the people that were there. And as you know, the lockdown regulations do not permit uh, for us to gather in those uh, huge numbers. And so for that reason, Minister Balula had to then say goodbye and uh, request that he continues the conversation with uh, the taxi industry leaders. So Shanguve was the hotspot in many ways of the protest today. I'm sure the minister, even in going to address the media, must have anticipated that there would be some kind of face time with the taxi drivers uh, themselves and having to get ready to answer the questions that they've had. And uh, the, the, the general impression is that many of them were left frustrated by what the minister had to say. 100%, Kathy. In fact, that was the reason why we chose that particular location. Minister Mbalula needed to satisfy himself with the uh, status quo on the ground and the situation that was there to make sure that indeed calm had been restored, as was reported. He went there because of the flare-ups that we had seen uh, in the morning rush. Uh, and, uh, we had uh, you know, reports of rubble strewn across the road. Uh, that uh, there was some heavy lifting of material that was also barricading the roads there. And so it was important for Minister Balula to be on the ground and not to give comment from an air-conditioned uh, office or somewhere in the upper echelons of society. He needed to go on the ground and find out what was happening. And you cannot ignore when your stakeholders then come to you and say, we are glad that you're here, we need an audience with you. Now, yes, you're quite right. Some of them did leave frustrated. He could only address there about five or six of those who had raised questions. Uh, and uh, the others he had to defer to a later meeting on Wednesday, as we've said. And so when he had to say to them that I actually can't uh, ventilate all these issues with you because we're having parallel conversations with your leadership, um, that that's when others said, but you need to spend more time with us. But a rally was never part of the plan. There's a great burden now on the transport ministry to resolve some of the issues that exist in the public transport sector. And, you know, it, it, it's... The fact that the government can be held at ransom by a, a private entity in this country in and of itself uh, shows how dire the situation is in terms of the lack of planning around public transport in this country. I think the term la uh, held to uh, ransom is quite a strong term, and I'm not quite sure if it's fitting here, because government is not being held at ransom by the taxi industry. This is a constitutional democracy that we're living under. Taxi industry, like any other industry, has a right to raise their concerns. They have a right to protest, so should they feel aggrieved. And they were exercising that right. We do, however, feel that it was premature for them to take to the streets in this manner because Minister Balula had uh, been engaging in discussion with them and will continue to engage uh, with them in conversation uh, this Wednesday. And so we are of the view that it's rather unfortunate because, yes, the taxi industry has suffered a lot under COVID-19, like many other industries. And, uh, of course, uh, you know, they, they were not able to operate at full capacity. They were not able to operate at all hours during level five and four. So, so there, were really, there were definite concerns that, that needed to be addressed that the industry has suffered much. But uh, the latter part of your question then speaks about formalization. The industry cries out and says, why are we not subsidized, Kathy, if I may take another 30 seconds or so? They say the buses are subsidized, the rail sector is subsidized, uh, aviation, maritime is subsidized, but us as the taxi industry are not. And we've come back to say, even outside COVID-19, we have discussed 
um, the, the prospect of regulating the industry, formalizing the industry, so that we can subsidize the industry. So it's a, a collegial relationship that we have that uh, sometimes ends up in these kinds of flare-ups, which is natural in a democracy. But to say that the government is being held at ransom, I think is uh, far from the truth. Of course, there is an impression that part of the reason why this COVID relief mechanism was announced was as a result of the exorbitant increases in fares that uh, were brought on the table by the industry and the outcry from commuters and in fact there is a perception that the taxi industry is being unfairly treated in this instance because they have not been the only sector affected. Well, Kathy, if you remember when those um, announcements were made about those exorbitant uh, fare increases, that even the taxi industry itself, uh, the mother bodies uh, such as Ntaho and NTA, also came out strongly against those handful of associations, uh, the, the likes of those in Alexandra, who had said that they want to increase the fares um, uh, by uh, you know, a couple of um, uh, percentage. I think it was 172, if memory serves me correct, but from uh, about 11 rand to 30 rand. It was not just the Ministry of Transport that said, if you continue with this, we will have to hand this over to Competition Commission. It was the taxi industry themselves who actually came out and said, fair increases happen every year. Every year we see a number of sectors raise their fares, their prices. This is in line with inflation and the like, and the taxi industry is no exclusion. But um, we need to make sure that those increases are just, that they're justifiable, and uh, that they do not um, take for granted the poor and the working class. And so this um, fair increase was an isolated matter. The um, assistance, as it were, that government is providing is separate to that and is not in response to uh, the tax and fair increases. This is just as a caring government that is assisting in a number of ways. We've seen a government come through for uh, your uh, artists. It's come through for uh, your um, informal traders who are running spaza shops and uh, we need to formalize so that the Department of uh, Small Business can assist them. So this is a way that government is also assisting the taxi industry. There'll be a lot riding on that meeting coming up in the next week because certainly the taxi industry goes out of its way to show that it has some power to pull in this and that if needs be, it can and will cause chaos. And that's part of the reason why you use being held to ransom because the impression that's created is that um, if there's a threat of chaos, then government will jump. And other industries who perhaps do not wield power in the same way that the industry does certainly wouldn't get the the ear of the government in the way that the taxi industry has right now. But, you know, Kathy, when we look at uh, the conversations that the minister is having with uh, the taxi industry, the reason why we shy away from the term negotiation is because it creates an impression of liability. This is an ex gratia payment. It's a once-off payment that is uh, a token to say we are hearing your cries. We will assist in this manner. It is not a rand-for-rand rand compensation. Government does not have that kind of money. Uh, this is relief or it is assistance. And we have been unequivocally clear. We have been abundantly upfront when it comes to, to that position. And uh, we had said this much to uh, Santaco, and we have of the view that if they insist, it would be like cutting their nose to spite their face because you cannot negotiate uh, the amount. This is why we're saying we're discussing how to disperse it. We're discussing whether or not we're including the e-hailing service provided, meters, taxis. We're discussing about cross-border travel. Um, we're discussing about capacity, whether or not we go to 100% capacity. All those things we can discuss. But there's no room for negotiating when it comes to the funds. Uh, unfortunately, we can't negotiate on an amount that is fixed, that is uh, immovable and that we cannot have any leeway over. So um, we do understand that they do feel aggrieved, that they want to protest, but unfortunately when it comes to the amount, there's no wiggle room.